The following podcast is a W2M Network original production. Visit W2Mnet.com for all of our other great podcasts, plus news, reviews, articles, and opinions from the worlds of wrestling, video games, football, and entertainment. You're listening to Wrestling to the Max. Alert, alert, clear all channels. This is an exclusive. How you like that? Sean Garmer, and Paul Leeser. Hello, and welcome to the first of what will be many W2M extras for the New Japan G1 Climax 27, this is of course we'll be covering night one on this show as they just had that on uh, July 17th on the Monday and of course they'll be take, they take a break and then they'll have shows all throughout on Thursday through Sunday. Uh, I'm your host Mr. Sean Garmer and here with me Mr. Paul Leeser. hey So Paul it has begun this grind that is uh. called the G1. And we got coaxed into watching some of these tag matches because they had really interesting stable against stable pairings here. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I, I like the first two tags. I didn't think they were anything special. Um, they were fun and everything. But I thought, like, you know, once you get to the uh, LIJ tag, it kind of that's when it gets good. Excuse me. Yeah, uh, I I personally really appreciated the opener. I thought it was really nice to see the old dudes come out with some fire to match, you know, Finley, Elgin, and, and Robinson's uh, stuff there. And they teased a whole lot in the second tag with, with Kenny Omega and uh, Suzuki sort of battling it out. And Suzuki, even after, you know, they cheat to win the match, essentially, they chase Kenny all the way to the back. Um, with a, with a brawl, so uh, interesting stuff happening there. I enjoyed the third one as well. Uh, Lij explodes essentially. Uh, they did a really great job of really telling the story. These guys know each other. They're looking to really try to get some momentum going forward, and uh, basically, it, it sort of ends in them all trying to one up each other, almost to the point that Hiromu is able to take control and pin Bushi, but. Uh, I, I re- like all of them are really enjoy. I, I could have done without the last one, but that's just because Jado's old and it, it hurts me to watch him. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Uh, Ghetto, the fans were really behind Ghetto though uh, mm-hmm. for that for him coming in there. Uh, you know, the two bookers going to go against each other. So it was just a little fun, like inside thing. And Okada was having none of Yano doing his stuff. He was uh, rather angry. <laughs> so, yes, very <laughs> intent on making sure any and all attempts at shenanigans did not happen until <laughs> they happened. <laughs> yes, of course, as always with Yano. But that probably means we know what's going to happen uh, when they face off on uh, night two. Uh, what an amazing moment that would be, though, if Yano gets to Yano Okada. <laughs> but uh, they did start off with an old man. Uh, Yuji Nagata, of course, this is his last G1 after... This is his now 19th consecutive G1 tournament. This man, what the ultimate grinder, mm-hmm. uh, Nagata, with with 19 of these straight. My goodness, that's crazy. Uh, that's... Of course, a former winner in 2001. Mm-hmm. Jeez. Uh, Yoshihashi, though, he comes ready for this test after debuting last year. And uh, amounting six points, he was uh, a little uh, dickish at times in this, just like mm-hmm. slapping Nagata around, like, "Yo, you're old, get off my stage!" Like, what are you doing? And uh, Nagata was having none of that. He was just slapping him right back, 
the slap fest was on for these two for a while. Uh, Nagata kicks the crap out of them. Uh, the 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 exploder felt like it had some extra juice in there. Uh, Yoshihashi got in uh, some not, that big powerbomb jackknife thing. That Yoshihashi got in all his stuff that you usually get to see from him. Of course, mm-hmm. the Swanton, all that stuff. Um, the the end was really fun too. Uh, just uh, Yoshihashi just battling back and everything. Uh, Nagata got to fight off Karma, but he hits a backstabber instead, and then he hits Karma. Yoshihashi getting the win. Kind of as we thought, but man, this was really, really good to start off things. I thought this was one of the better openers to G1 I've seen before. Uh, this had great storytelling in it because I, I feel like Yoshihashi was slapping Nagata around, trying to get him to wake up, trying to find that last little bit of old Nagata that is still in him. And boy, did Blue Justice come to life and just lace him uh with some very excruciatingly brutal chops that uh left me surprised that yoshihashi still had skin on his chest uh uh i and and yuji's in it the the entire way and yoshi you know almost at times looks like he might have woken up too much of the old blue justice until he finally manages to put him away so i i thought this was a great opener I enjoyed this the whole way. This makes Yoshihashi look really, really good, if you ask me. Even though Nagata is on his last tournament, looks like he might not get a win until the end or something like that. Um, th- this is a great win for Yoshihashi, who is really still looking for that big breakout singles win, and this might have been the first in a string of them that we could see during this tournament. Yeah, certainly. And I think uh, you know he also gets a kick out of the, the backdrop pin, too, which is a mm-hmm. big thing for uh, Yoshihashi. And he... Just he looked really, really good here. He was f- on fire, uh, like you said. Brought out that old Nagata and got the win over mm-hmm. old Nagata at a moment when this is you know Nagata's still fresh. I mean, this is not like I think he's probably going to go through the th- same thing like Tenzon, right? He's going to get tired as as the thing goes on because this is you know nineteen shows and right. he, he's what like forty nine, so. Uh, this is the, it's gonna wear on him. So it actually kind of means more that he wins the match here instead of say if he won it later on down the line. Exactly. Uh, Nagata is forty nine. You are correct. Uh, I, and I agree with that entirely. I really feel like this is probably gonna be a lot of what you're gonna get from Nagata in this tournament, especially when it comes to some of the younger guys in the eight, in the block, uh, maybe like a Kota Ibushi too or something like that, where. You're going to see him try to fire up and see if he can't try to outwit him, and, and it's just not going to work. So uh, we'll just have to see how this all that plays out. But I, I agree with the entire uh, – Nagata, uh, a much better conditioned worker than um, – than, uh, oh, geez, I'm blanking <laughs> – than, uh, than Mr. Tenzon was last year, I think, still, yes. even though he's 49. Certainly. I, I think, obviously, you know, Tenzo's getting to that point where this is why he's been uh, on the lower cards for a while. And uh, even then, I think, you know, Nagata was, he's he's done the MMA stuff. He's He's been around a long time and, and had to be uh, conditioned. I think Tenzon has been that way for, for quite a while. Plus, he could also rely on Kojima. So, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, Nagata always kind of had to be the the stronger part, even when he was, you know, teaming with Nakanishi. Like, you know, Nakanishi's the bigger guy, older guy. Like, you know, had to rely on Nagata for for those kind of things. Uh, and Nagata always also gets to keep in condition working with the young guys. Yes, so that, that helps him too. Uh, speaking of guys that are not so young, uh, Togi Makabe, he is forty four. And he is uh, wrestling in this tournament. A, a guy that unfortunately has not been doing a lot because his partner uh, is is down, Mr. Hanma. So I'm sure he is uh, wrestling this tournament in in his honor here. And he starts off, I think, really motivated here against the Bad Luck Fale in a big old uh, Haas battle going on with, with I mean, the, these two big guys. Uh, Fale, of course, does his... We're going to take you to the outside, and I'm going to hit you with something. In mm-hmm. this case, uh, Makabe's chain and dragging him around and stuff. Uh, they get into some really good uh, back and forth after a while. Like, Fale kind of gets the heat, and then 
Makabe comes back with his strikes in the corner and uh, his suplex and the, the lariats and stuff. Uh, Fale can't hit the bad luck fall. So eventually Makabe gets a little too overconfident, especially knowing like you're not going to go clear across the ring. Come on now. Trying to do that King Kong. And bad luck Fale takes advantage, grenade, and that's all she wrote. Mm-hmm. Uh, this was fine for what it was. Um, I, I think these two have had much better matches, obviously, in the past, but Makabe is what he is at this point, and so is Fale. And this is probably the best you're going to get from him right now. It's just two dudes going out there trying to out hoss each other. I think Fale getting the win here is probably the right call. I don't wager Makabe is going to get a lot of wins. And, um, yeah, th- this did fine for I I would have been okay if they shaved a minute or two off personally, but um, I still think this got the point across that neither guy is really one to be messed with in this tournament, and they're going to come out there looking to beat you up for for about ten to twelve minutes and hope that's enough. Yeah, I agree. Uh, you know, if this is a guy that you'd expect Fale to beat, so you know you mm-hmm. expect him to get the two points here. Makabe made it a challenge. And, uh, you know, I, I like that. I like the way they did the finish. It, you know, Makabe missed, which I don't think was his intention there. But aside from that, this was, you know, good for what it was. You kind of knew coming in this is probably going to be the weakest match on of the five. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when you got the, this lineup that you got on the first night, it's going to be hard to deliver up to that level. Mm-hmm. So speaking of... That level. The level rises oh. quickly. Good lord. And, you know, get ready to snap your head because uh, this is what these two do with uh, headbutts and everything else, as you'd expect from the two Chaos guys and uh, Hiroki Goto and Tomohiro Ishii. Of course, these guys have had numerous matches against each other when Hiroki Goto was not part of Chaos either. And. Man, they just absolutely light each other up. I mean, there's there's no other way to put this, right? Like, man, they they just go at it here. Like, Ishii uh. just hits some nasty head of us. They do mm. that thing with the lariats where, like, neither guy goes down. So you just see the, like, arm hitting the neck and chest area. And you're like, oh, my God, I am shivering in pain for these men. It's just awful. Uh, it, it's like, man, this is so great, but it's like I feel so bad bad for them having to watch this. And then it just picks up really uh, hot and heavy. Uh, you get Super Brain Buster. You get the Enziguri Powerbomb from Ishii. You get Ushiguroshi. Uh, just lariats everywhere. Uh, headbutts. Just everything. Uh, Goto eventually hits two GTRs to take out Ishii. But man, so much awesome. Uh, uh, I, I can't speak well enough about this match. Uh, if, if the bell rings, they already come running out throwing shoulder blocks, and then that turns into chops, and then that turns into headbutts. Nobody's selling anything. <laughs> Nobody sells anything in this match. They could have hit each other with cinder blocks at the end. I would have expected somebody to get up. Like, it, this was just two dudes throwing big stuff, seeing who couldn't get up. That's how yep. this ended. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I, I mean, hats off to both of them, too, for coming out with this on night one, too. They have a long tournament ahead of them, and I uh, I wager they're going to be filling some of this all the way to the very end. Yeah, you know, Ishii is just, he's great, um, as, as we talk about at length all the time. But, uh, you know, Goto, I think sometimes we give it to him, but a lot of people... Uh, you know, don't like him because of his his tag that he has as the the bridesmaid and never getting really the big one and all that stuff. And but no doubt he delivers right when he he goes out there and especially against certain guys. And you know, Ishii, I was gonna bring the best out of him. And in fact, Ishii was telling him like, "Dude, get up, hit me, hit me <laughs> some more." And that that would just kind of propel Goto to keep doing it and uh, just. You know, when you got somebody challenging your manhood, you better go out there and and give it to them. And uh, they did that, and maybe Ishii did a little bit too much because he lost. You know, uh, lots of headbutts in this from Ishii too, which makes me really nervous now since uh, Shibata's injury. But they seemed a little worked, though. 
Yeah, th- these are nowhere near the just grab them by the head, rev back, and then swing with all your might head to head. This is very much just stepping forward with your head into his. But it's still that 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 aura is there, you know. And mm-hmm. for me, I think what I really liked about this so much is I don't know if it's so much that Ishi Ishi couldn't you know just bit off more than he could chew. It's just that Goto eventually gets to that point where he's finally starting to get there. And um, get to that level that Ishii's usually at, and then just manage his GTR is just easier to hit, almost, you know, because Brain Buster, you got to do more work. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true, you do have to hit more work because he kicked out of the, you know, sliding lariat, so that's yeah. Ishii's next thing. And yeah, you, you have to you have to watch out because then Goto can switch it into the Shaft and Kai that he doesn't really do that much anymore. So uh, I'm I miss that move so much. I'm kind of glad it's used as his like super finisher now, though. Yeah, because it was, it was something that, like, you know, it's amazing how you could pull that off so mm-hmm. much because it looks like something that you could hurt somebody with, you know. Um, but, yeah, it's when he pulls that out and you somehow get out of that, that's, that's <coughs> insane, you know, like uh, Omega did last year. So, yeah, it, that, it's it's a special thing, and I, I kind of like, I agree with you, I kind of like that it's it's in that upper echelon level of things. That you know it's gone to another level when he's he's pulling that out. Exactly. Uh, so you get uh, Hiroshi Tanahashi coming out here in uh, some new gear, and he's uh, he's got a little sleeve on his arm to let you know that uh, it's hurting his, his bicep there. And as Zack Saber Jr., you don't need to tell him twice where he needs to go with uh, with his moves on on this evening. Desperado is out there. Uh, sadly, we have to have somebody from Zuki Gun right. out there with him. Uh, but thankfully, he doesn't get involved too much in this match. He does sort of factor a little into the finish, distracting Tanahashi. But I think it doesn't really hurt the match that much. Uh, Tanahashi, I love the fact that he comes out here and he knows, like, Zack Sabre Jr. is going to go out to my arm. Like, let's let's try to... Get him away from my arm. And eventually, you know, CSJ being so good at what he is, he's going to get that arm. He's going to wrench on it. He's going to do what he's got to do. So Tanahashi does his thing, where he, what he does to always protect himself. Dragon screw you to death. Mm-hmm. And so uh, <laughs> Saber Jr. Gets, uh, gets to deal with that. So now you've got one arm that's hurt, a leg that's hurt. Uh, who's going to be able to outlast and just... Tanahashi does everything. He he gets that sling blade in. He he does the high five flow with Saber standing, but he can't uh, get the one where he's down. And of course, that's where Desperado sort of factors in, allowing Saber to just rip at the arm, and then he just he like wings it, puts it behind Tanahashi, and he has to eventually tap out. Uh Man, th- this match was just really something special, if you ask me. I think Saber knows he has something to prove to at least people in Japan, maybe not so much people watching internationally, but um, I feel like that New Japan crowd really hasn't gotten behind him that much, and they were certainly into this the whole way, I think. And Tanahashi being there helps, obviously, but giving a story already built in for Saber to work with was just really perfect, and Running like half this match is just Saber trying to grapple Tanahashi until mm-hmm. Tanahashi finally has enough of it, and then they start getting into some wrestling. And uh, Saber's content to strike and, and put in mo- submissions and try to transition to stuff. And um, eventually, we finally get to this, the part where he starts manipulating all the hands and fingers and wrists as you know, just uncomfortably as you can possibly make it look, and it, it works. Uh, <laughs> Tanahashi taps and at uh, th- this was just this was so so good. I I don't think I can talk about it properly. Uh, it's just one of those you have to go watch. But for sure, like this is if Saber is if the story is it there for Saber to be a Minoru Suzuki Junior? This was a a very very solid presentation of that. Yeah, because you get that sort of the submission wrestling, and he can also strike you to. Mm-hmm. Uh, like Suzuki, and then you know Suzuki has his other ways of uh, beating you, but Saber has his like sort of death blow way of if he gets that limb and starts manipulating parts of it, or just gets your whole body uh, like mm-hmm. he did the juice, you know, watch out 
because uh, there's no uh, no way coming out of that, and it looks just as deadly as if Suzuki were to hit the pile driver, you know. Right. Uh, so it's it's two different ways of of doing that, but it's just it's so believable from Saber too. Like it would it wouldn't be nothing if he didn't have a way of making you cringe when he does it. Like it's just mm-hmm. that's how I know he gets you is. Man, you really do feel like he's got Tanahashi in that spot where if he doesn't do it, this is like MMA. I'm going to break your arm. And right. I, that's what's so good. Tanahashi does a good job of selling it, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Tanahashi really does a great job, I think, of making Sabre look impressive. But at the same time, I mean, he still looks ultra competitive, even though he's essentially working without an arm. Um, and, and they do a great job of showcasing that, I think, at the beginning, whenever Tanahashi is very present in the fact of trying to keep his injured arm behind him so that Sabre mm-hmm. can't grab at it so easily. So this is this is just a really terrifically well-done job of telling a story that makes Zack Sabre look ultra-deadly while Tanahashi still looks like the ace that he is. Exactly, and another thing, you know, with Suzuki is that sometimes his matches are not very flashy, but mm-hmm. they have a special way of being just as great as the ones that are, like the, one, the match we're going to talk about after this one. You know, this was kind of the same way of just, it's not flashy, it's not moves a million miles a minute, mm-hmm. it's, this is methodical, we're telling a, a different kind of story here, and it works because it's different than than what you get in, in the other matches. Exactly. And that, I, this being the semi-main event before we get to the main event, I think is infinitely helpful too, because while this is still an absolutely phenomenal match... Like you said, it's not out there to be flashy. It's telling a story, and it's not getting the crowd all riled up. You know, like they're certainly into this for sure. I don't want to make it seem like they're quiet, but for the noise level from this match to the main event is night and day. Yes, uh, totally agree, and we can get into why right now because oh my god, huh. talk about you wanted a sprint. You might need to watch this a couple of times because you were out of breath before, you know, <laughs> halfway through. This is so great. Of course, you got two wonderful talents in Kota Ibushi and Tetsuya Naito in this main event. The crowd is very, very pro Naito here. You, they do get into Ibushi uh, later, but it's always pro Naito in this match. Mm-hmm. And just... And maybe not from the word go like uh, Ishii and Goto, but they go at it here uh, just with the big moves that you could think of. Um, just uh, so many uh, to, to talk about here. Of course, you get the Golden Triangle. You get uh, uh, Naito, uh, Ibushi doing the, the Germans, uh, the big kicks. Uh, all that, the uh, Naito hitting his uh, German, hitting Gloria, um, to a point where, like, Ibushi hits Naito so hard with kicks that, like, the referee has to make sure that Naito's okay, and uh, that was pretty awesome. Ibushi gets to hit that German suplex from the outside to the inside that you're like, oh my god, why does they let him do this? Mm-hmm. And uh, the reverse Rana from the top by Naito is amazing, and of course we can't stop, we can't get out of this without talking without the freaking pile driver from the top rope. Oh, oh my, my god. god! How did he not die? I, I don't not... know. He's so tranquilo, it didn't kill him. That's yes, the only reasoning I could come up with. He somehow has his own slowdown device. That's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happened here. Uh, Naito actually hits a... It's not the full Destino. It's like the one where he runs up and does it. Uh, so he doesn't get the full impact. Ibushi kicks out. But then Naito immediately hits a another one. The one where he's just standing calmly. And Ibushi is down. A little surprised. I thought Ibushi might get the upset. But uh, man. He really had to fight for this one. Ibushi gave it everything. Yeah, this one really, really surprised me for sure uh, with the finish, at least because I was expecting Coda to win much like you. Uh, and at, by the end of this, Coda didn't really need to win anymore, right? Like he, they mm-hmm. spent most of the match. I think re- if you had forgotten Coda or you know anything like that, they gave you every bit of a reason to want to follow this guy 
and be reminded that, hey, this guy's great. This guy knows what he's doing. This guy is a big deal here, and he's going, you know, toe to toe with with one of the top three in, in the promotion right now. And Naito, unbelievable performance here for sure. Does such a phenomenal job of selling for Kota Ibushi, maybe better than anybody on New Japan has done for for the young man. Uh, the kicks thing is is a picture that's been going around on Facebook since the turn or since this ended of Naito's face just how shocked he is that how hurt he is by all these kicks that Kota's landing on him and, you know, he's sucking down wind and, and there are times where it looks like he's not breathing and all, all these other little tiny things that finally lead up to this huge pile driver near the end off the ropes that I, I'd put. Oh, if his hair wasn't so full of gel, maybe that just sprung him enough to where his neck didn't take all the impact yeah. too. But uh, <laughs> oh. th- this this is great. This is one of the, one of the best matches of the year. Not five stars, but it's pretty darn close. Um, and and I just you can't speak highly enough about it. this. Is a great main event for night one for sure. Yeah, totally. I wouldn't blame you if you did go for the full five because this definitely just it. Uh, it is it's a knock your socks off uh, match, mm-hmm. like uh, Paul said, match of the year candidate for sure. It already sets that tone uh, for the G one. Like now, right? Night two, you know, yeah, top this, he, you know, yeah, <laughs> top this. Let's see what she can do, because man, these guys brought it between you know the last three matches. You've got a lot to live up to already on that Thursday morning, so. Now, Okada get. I mean, I don't know about Okada and Yano is going to be doing it, but uh, everybody else is going to have to step up their game. I mm-hmm. uh, just, it's the, the not not just the selling. I think it's just the going the back and forth with the big moves, right? Mm-hmm. And then setting them up, blocking it, hitting that move. Then when you think somebody's going to go for another one, Naito blocks it and he hits his. Just there is just so much going on. It's very dramatic. You're into. I just don't know how you can't be into. It. If you watch this match and don't like, your 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 heart's not pounding, pulsing. Like, I just, man, I'm sitting here. Uh, I'm having to produce another podcast and watching this, and I'm I'm jumping out of my seat like, oh, thank God I'm on mute because the other guy would have gone nuts. Uh, like, <laughs> why are you screaming? Like, I'm screaming because this is so amazing. Like, just uh, so much good stuff. Uh, I just hope uh, Bushi gets, you know, I, I know he's going to give it give it his all in the sermon. He's going to do great things. So that's that's the way he is. Uh, but I just hope that he he gets a lot of you know points and gets to be there in the end. I just I'd hate to see him just kind of get the oh he got the six or the eight and that's all that's it for him. I, like like we I think like we talked about in our preview, right? It depends on how long Ibushi's going to stick around, if he is going to stick around, or if he's just here to sort of help fill this out to make another big star. And Block A is stacked to nobody's mm. business, right? So uh, if Ibushi does great, then awesome. You know, hopefully he sticks around and you can build off of this. If he's not, maybe he hasn't signed, but somebody else gets to come out of this looking great. So I think New Japan's sort of in a win-win with him right here because they. Kota still has a lot to prove if he is going to stick around, right? That, hey, I'm here for real this time. I want to be the champion. I want to do all these great things for you. And here's, you know, this is my moment. And this match is certainly at least a testament to that part of thinking, I think. Um, I know I have Kota going pretty deep in the tournament. I have him runner up in the block. But uh, th- this one's, uh, I-, I went three for five in my predictions here tonight. I, I had. Fale and Makabe could have gone either way, and I went with Makabe just because night one upsets. But I think uh, I think Kota's going to do just fine personally. I wound up going. I think Goto and I might. I think I went Ishi. So I went the same. I got three for five because I I went Ibushi and I went Ishi, and so Goto won and Naito won. But man, Naito won this match, and I think a lot of people thought Ibushi might get the upset to kind of set him up well and then kind of this be the big loss for Naito before he goes on a big run so now you're kind of looking mm-hmm. at it going okay well who is going to be the guy uh, right. that beats Naito you know uh, out of this block and it's like well I mean Ishii already beat him in that US tournament so it's like would they have him lose to him again mm-hmm. I guess you know Fall Lake could always beat anybody and that doesn't hurt anyone if you lose to him and I guess Goto is 
sort of in that same realm too. Mm-hmm. But it's like you know he's going to beat Tanahashi and the other guys he really shouldn't lose to. So, you know. Yeah, I, I mean, I think for sure he's going to get that win back against Tanahashi, no doubt. Um, yeah, one of the young guns could upset him, you know, like a, a Zack Saber or a Yoshihashi for sure. Um, I would think he would beat Ishii after the the U.S. tournament, but once again, you never know. Um, Ishii's another one they like to to try to keep looking pretty good in these um, in these tournaments. So, I you know, it's it's really anybody's ball game. Um, I think in Block A that and. I know Naito's the easy favorite, but I think it really anybody out of this block could come out of it, and you could be like, yeah, okay, I believe that. Right. Uh, so, the, of course, to give you the point tally that I'm sure most of you listening to this already know, but this means that Zack Sabre Jr., Yoshihashi, Tetsuya Naito, Bad Luck Fale, and Hiroki Goto all have two points. Everybody else has zero. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this is the first night, and of course that means block B on... Thursday morning uh, for us here in uh, the United States, and it's, what, Kojima and, uh, Kojima and Juice, right? Uh, Let me go check. (laughs) I know, well, we know it's uh, Yano and Okada, and we know it's Suzuki and Omega, for sure. Uh, Man, Suzuki and Omega is going to be freaking awesome. That's the main event. You have Okada and Toriyano in the semi-main. You have Sonata and Evil. Uh, then you have Michael Oak and Tama Tonga, which could be really great, too. And then Kojima and Robinson. Yeah, so, you know, Kojima and Juice could uh, be one of those under-the-radar really good matches. You know, Elgin and Tama as well, you know, mm-hmm. especially if, you know, Tama really wants to come out there to try to prove something. Sonata and Evil, too. You know, uh, yeah. if their tag match was anything to go by, watch out. And then yeah. the the only one that you're thinking, I mean, even Okada against Yano, I mean, that thing could end in like a minute with Okada just giving Yano Rainmaker really fast. Mm-hmm. But uh, Or like the other that, way, you know, Yano yeah, catches yeah. Okada low and, and suddenly he's out. That would be amazing. <laughs> like, you're going to have Yano and Okada and, uh, I mean... They probably wouldn't because they're in the same stable, but, like, can you imagine Yano and Okada for the title? Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, maybe somewhere small that could do well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like, oh, five-minute IWGV title match. Okada just kills him. They, yeah. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, Omega Suzuki is going to be amazing. Uh mm-hmm. But again, they they have a lot to live up to with with the way Block A went. So, right, there's gonna be high expectations there for those two. Guys. I, I, they're gonna be in Kurikin, so they're gonna have that great crowd with them too. So, I, I would I would expect them to do very well. Yeah, with the tear that Omega's been on, <laughs> I expect uh, some great stuff. You might even get uh, Face Kenny here because you know Suzuki is people really. He's just easy to hate. Right? Yeah, and. Uh, you know, Elgin is beloved, and then people, you know, just give Tama no reaction most of the time. So, you know, Elgin, but yeah, Elgin can make Tama get a reaction. So that's mm-hmm. that's fine, and and you don't have to worry about Juice because he will give you all the energy uh, that you need in that match. And with Kojima, just expect a lariat killing Juice out of nowhere or something, or maybe Juice gets the upset. You never know. Yeah, I mean, I think energy is an important one in that first match there. Kojima and Juice both bring it uh, lots of energy to the crowd, lots of energy for their match. So uh, I kind of expect to be a little bit out of breath after that one, honestly. <laughs> and, uh, you know, Juice, get ready for those uh, multiple chops that you oh. only took once. So <laughs> Bye-bye chest. Yes, exactly. But, yeah, lots to look forward to for the night two. And, of course, it'll be night three, four, and five all in a row after that. So get ready for this, Paul. Who needs sleep? Who needs sleep? It's G1 time. Exactly. Get get ready to just every day. You're watching G1. You can't really complain about that because you'll be watching great matches. So, Uh, I mean, awesome awesome wrestling happening. Uh, Somehow we have to figure out how to fit that WWE Battleground in there. 
but uh, you know, you gotta take the good with the bad, maybe. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I am just so flat on this pay per view coming up too. So yeah, me, me too. <laughs> me too. So you know, we could sleep after we watch the G one. You could sleep watching that Punjabi prison match. So. Oh, that might put me to sleep. <laughs> but don't sleep on uh, this G one if you. Have not watched it. It's free on New Japan World that night one, and if it doesn't hook you, I don't know what you must not like wrestling. Is it? I don't. It doesn't matter what kind of wrestling you like. There's something in there for everybody. Mm-hmm. Okay, and it's free. Go watch it. If you don't have New Japan World, it's ten dollars, and you can watch most of the tournament, uh, and then you'll have to pay ten dollars again on the first. So uh, you know, or you can wait till the first, pay one time. And then go back and watch, you know, the matches that you enjoyed or whatever. We'll be here to try to give you the lowdown on all those matches, uh, get getting you in there and, and knowing uh, which matches you need to watch. Uh, for this show, pretty much watch four out of the five. Uh, yeah, you know. absolutely. Yeah. I, I mean, even Makabe and Fale has its moments, too. But uh, for sure, if you're pressed for time, four out of five here, definitely worth your time. Yeah, I mean, you can't uh, ask for any better than that other than getting the full fiver. So maybe one of these <laughs> nights we'll have that. I'm sure we, we probably will get that at some point. But yeah, so check this out. Watch it. You will not regret it. And we'll be back for night two on Thursday night. Yeah, that's right, man. Can't wait. Well, until then, everybody, we'll see you later. Have a good one, guys. The following podcast is a W2M Network original production. Visit W2Mnet.com for all of our other great podcasts, plus news, reviews, articles, and opinions from the worlds of wrestling, video games, football, and entertainment.